Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you guys this really, really cool terminal. So let's get started. So recently this terminal has caught my attention. Now I originally watched it from this other channel called Linux for Everyone and I'll leave a link to their channel down in the description below. He did a quick review on this terminal for PC and I thought this is something I have to get on the Raspberry Pi because it's just something cool to be messing around with, especially if you're gonna show it off to your friend or something like that. I am gonna leave everything I talk about in the links down in the description below. Popping over to my desktop right now, you could see that I actually have his GitHub up already. And you can see he's still updating it. As of a couple of hours ago, you could see he did some updates. And this is very, very new. It added an ARM nuance to the README, which is something I had problems compiling originally. And now he actually added some um, how-tos to do it. Anyway, going into it, you could see how cool this looks. He definitely got the inspiration from Tron, as you can see earlier in that image over here. And this is a full terminal. Have you ever seen Tron, the latest movie? You would see that this is on the table. Even the previous movie, you would see that this was on a table and he was able to type on it. 100% inspired from here. And now on his version, this is version 3.0, but he only has the release version of 2.2.2. So I've actually compiled 2.2.2 and 3.0. Without having to bore you with the details, it had to do a lot with the Squish FX. Uh, XZ compression, etc, etc. But good news for you guys, I've compiled the latest one which is 3.0 and I've also compiled the 2.2.2 which you can actually find on my Discord and I'll leave a link for that down in the description below as well. And once you go over to good stuff, that's where I have the files for that. Now for PC, you, you could just download it right from his releases. He will have all the images right here and you could just do like 32-bit, 64-bit, Mac OS, Windows, whatever you want. He has all the images for that as well for the 2.2.2. So you don't have to compile it if you're on a regular PC already. Just for the ARM version, because he doesn't have it available, you would need to compile. Anyway, let's jump into it and see how it looks. So if I was to go to EDEX 2.2.2, it does take a little bit to load. And as you can see, it's an app image. So it actually asked me to if I want to add it to my start menu icons. But now I'm good. I'm just going to leave it as no. It does take like quite some time to load, maybe at least a minute just to boot it in. It also uses OpenGL, so it doesn't run too well on the Raspberry Pi because our graphic cards aren't that great. But nonetheless, it does work and definitely a really cool novelty item if you want to show off to your friends of how cool your terminal looks. So uh, let's just jump into it. This is real time right now and I'm just going to let it run to see how long it'll actually boot up. All right, so here we have the black screen. Uh, give it a minute because again, it's gonna have to load, but it does have like a really cool like introduction or how it starts up or how it boots up. So I thought it was really cool when it does it. Oh, did I forget to mention? There's sound effects. There we have it. This is so cool. Like this is by far one of the coolest terminals I have ever seen. And this works on the seven inch touch. This works on touch screens. It, it's, it's really cool. So going down the panels, you have the clock, your date, CPU usage, your temperatures, which is pretty accurate. I don't know about these minimum and maximum uh, gigahertz, which says two, but my CPU is not. So I'm guessing it's rounding up from 1.8. Uh, I am using this on the Raspberry Pi 400, so I have the keyboard here and everything. Uh, you also have the memory locations. I think this might be fake because it just has random dots all over the place. The swap information, top processes. Uh, we have our terminal, which is right here, the, this big thing. And then on the right side, we have our network information, which is the network status, and this is our public IP address. And if you notice, I am showing my public IP address, that because I'm gonna segue into my next point of view, which is VPN. If you guys are not using VPNs, 
please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you want to be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using it for so long. And if you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. And they also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime, I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to actually disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no law. If I don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my ISP to know what I'm doing, I wouldn't want them to know either. So they have no logs whatsoever. It also allows for P2P. And if you guys don't know what that is, don't worry about it. And my main use of scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so I could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the States. But yeah, you could do that with this as well. And best of all, if you're using the link down in the description below, you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money back guarantee, you also get three free months. So you definitely have plenty of time to try this before committing to it. So really you have nothing to lose. Anyway, let's jump back to the video. So now that you know that this is not my public IP, um, you could also notice that they have this globe, which is actually pretty accurate because I am actually at a location of New York and you could see the, this little dot in the back is actually pointing to New York. So it's actually getting my geolocation from my IP address. That's what I mean. You need to hide yourself because you could even get that just from looking it up. And it is pulling from New York and you can see that little dot. The satellites, I don't know if they're real. It, I think they're just random, but at least I know this longitude and latitude working. You do have the network traffic up and down as well. You could see if it's going up and down and this keyboard actually works. So if I hit enter, so for a touchscreen, you could actually use it as a keyboard as well as this file system thing works as well. So if I was to go up one level, you see how it will actually automatically type CD dot dot just to go to a previous level. If I go up again, it will do the same thing. And if I was to hit a directory, it will actually CD into that downloads directory and go back up. So you could actually click on applications to run or to use or get into folders. But how cool is this? Everything has a sound effect. Now, if I was to actually do something like uh, Neo fetch, it does run applications like this. It doesn't run GUI applications because it's not meant for that. So if I was to try to do something like mouse pad, which is Raspberry Pi's uh, text editor, you would see it won't allow it. So it's not going to run applications like that. But if you are going to run terminal applications, it runs perfectly fine. So let's to take a look at all the shortcuts, but you should really check out the GitHub because it has more detailed information. If you hold shift control K, it will give you all your keyboard shortcuts. And if you do control shift S, it'll allow you to go through all your settings. So you could actually change themes and change settings or change parameters to how you like it. And this is not the only theme that's available. There are a couple of other themes. The most important thing that you do need to know is shift control P and this will actually disable the keyboard. So if I'm typing in something now, like say a password, it won't show up on the keyboard. So if I leave it, turn it back on, you can see it's like typing. So what I would do is sudo apt install C matrix. Let's do that. And then it's going to ask me for password. Actually, it didn't because I probably sudo something earlier. But remember, shift control P is to hide the password. Now it's going to load C matrix. And let's see how cool this looks. C matrix. All right. Look at that. Now we have um, matrix and Tron working together. You, you do also have different terminal tabs, so you could switch over to other stuff if you need to. This also loads as well. Got the cool sound effects going in the background. 
go back to C matrix. I'm telling you, and yes, this is a novelty item. It is a pretty cool terminal, but imagine you could show your inner geek or inner nerd to a friend, like your computer or laptop boots up with this screen going on. Th that would be one of the coolest things. One thing I did want to show you since this is using OpenGL, which is FPS. So I'm gonna exit this real quick. And if you've seen my gaming channel, you would probably know how to get FPS is on screen. So I'm going to use gallium underscore HUD equals FPS. And I'll leave a link to that video if you guys are interested to get heads up displays and FPS counters on your games and stuff like that. Then I am actually going to do bang bang because the previous command was that. And now I'm going to have gallium in front of that. Give this a second to load. I'm just going to jump right into it. All right, and there we have it. It's loaded up. It does about like 30, 30 frames per second, 25. I mean, it bounces up dramatically and you can see the average right over here. I'm not doing anything with this right now, but if I was to switch the screen to say CD, you would see it loading and then you would see a dip on the FPS. And if I was to go over to downloads or run Neo Fetch, it does run up and down. And it averages around, I guess, 30, you could say. I mean, it is doing okay. I mean, it's not too bad. The planet spins pretty well, uh, but it's not ideal. If you're going to do this on like a PC or something like that, you're going to get high frame rates because this is not a heavy application. But for the Raspberry Pi, it is a heavy application. And keep in mind, this is not overclocked. It is completely stock clock. And I'm pretty sure if I was to overclock the GPU frequency on this Raspberry Pi, I'd probably get like a stable 30 frames per second and at least maybe possibly hitting 40. The stock clock is pretty low on the Raspberry Pi. Now, I did experience a little bit of issues running 3.0. That's why I'm not previewing it because I did have weird blocking issues where certain things wouldn't load. Like if I was to do shift control K for the keyboard shortcuts, it would just be like a white screen and wouldn't load. So it does work. It's just certain things doesn't work and your mileage may vary because I wasn't able to get certain things to run and I was only running it off this Raspberry Pi keyboard. If you guys have any more luck with it, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for me guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys like content like this where I'm just previewing software, showing you guys off all this stuff, let me know down in the comments below as well. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing, also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my nerd cave, Hack till it hurts.